Hi everyone. I've got some primroses today. I thought we'd have a go at something a bit more spring like. So that's the photo. Um, what I would suggest is you choose either three or five primroses. You can choose any of the ones you can see um, and just do a few primroses and some leaves. So the way to approach it is to get this guide mark. I've left my guide marks in so you can see. So I have chosen this one and this one. You can see I've placed them here and I've got the angle with those guide marks. Then you can place the centre in where it is within that ellipse and then you can come round and create your petal shapes with if you think about the the face of a clock it helps you to place each of these petals in the right place um, you want to make them quite big if you're going to fill a page or you can go down to half a page don't be afraid to turn it around it could be any way this this picture so just choose ones that you like to that that you can reference so i've then picked um this one here for here um, and I've also got this one for here so I've just I've just picked out a few and then I've got this one here just there as well and then I've popped in a few leaves what tends to happen is once you get into it you end up forming different leaves anyway um, but it's always nice to have a bit of a base there to start with. So really focus on your drawing and getting the placement of these flowers right. It's really nice exercise for perspective just to practice with the drawing and getting the placement of the centre and then getting the petals in. That centre is hardly ever in the centre. This one is pretty much because it's it's a dead on flower but when they're, they're side facing you often get one side that's much shorter than the other so it's just getting that placement right you can always measure as well you can always measure with your pencil so you, you say take half there so you know where that is and where that is and and then you can measure the the percentage of that line so you can see that's about a third in and then you can go a third in here and you've got two thirds this side yeah so if that makes sense sometimes hard to explain so you you know where you're placing them it helps you to measure using your pencil okay colors wise if you haven't got any of these colors then you can just mix up something that works similar so we've got gambo's yellow i've got permanent rose i've got i've got quite a lot because i'm working wet in wet today so make sure you mix quite a bit up with worst with water um i've got this is Windsor Blue or Intense Blue if it's student quality or Pathalo Blue with some of the Gamboge. So I've got a lighter green. Then I've got a darker green and that is made with um, the same blue and Burnt Sienna. So if you haven't got a Pathalo or a Windsor or a um, Intense Blue in student quality, then you're best to use something like an ultramarine or a cobalt blue, but then mix it as a darker, a darker green using the yellow. Don't put the burnt sienna in because it will go muddy. Um, so only use the burnt sienna if it's a pathalo type pigment. Then this colour is the the dioxazine violet or Windsor violet with a bit of burnt sienna. So you get in that sort of maroony aubergine type colour which works really nice for darks. I'm going to use a little bit of ink in mine as well, some sepia FW ink but if you haven't got that don't worry you don't need it and I've got a little bit of salt to hand as well. Okay so once you've focused on your drawing and got that all drawn out then we're going to go on with a wet in wet wash. Now you can if you want to mask out around the edge of the primrose flowers um it's entirely up to you depending on how many you've got then you can because they're quite a simple shape get around them quite easily so i'm not worried about the stems 
I'm just worried about the heads of the flower that I'm keeping clean. I tend to work quite quickly with my um, wet and wet washers and so something like this doesn't phase me but if it's phasing you then mask out around the edge of the petals and it will give you more time. When I say mask out I mean mask out on the inside edge. You don't have to get all the way to the edges as long as you're getting all the way to the edges with the paint so don't panic too much if you're miss missing those edges in places just get plenty of water on it's quite forgiving this one having to bend right down to see where the, the water is make sure I've got enough on so you want all your colours mixed ready I've got a round number 10 I'm going to come in to start with with some gamboge yellow So this is a really nice base we're creating, ready for some detail for later. So you don't really need to worry too much about where the colour's going. yellow on so I'm just going to work through the colours now a bit of a tiny bit of rose it just tends to lift it always seems a little bit crazy when you put it on but it does tend to lift a little bit later and you can see these colours coming through So quite random, a few dabs here and there, just think a little bit about balance. Then I'm coming into the paler of the greens. And at this point now I want you to just focus on getting around the edge of the the petals at the same time. This is when you'll start to see that all of those lines you've drawn in are going to be really difficult for you to see. But the beauty of watercolour is it sort of creates its own thing anyway and we can work with that later. So you can start to paint some of these these leaves in but don't just paint the leaves. You want the colour to, to spread out. Just keep reloading your brush, dabbing in. So this one here that's in bud form, I haven't painted the 
the actual stem because I don't want to lose that detail too much at this stage. So that base bit of the board I've still kept as well, kept that dry. It doesn't matter if you've got a few puddles, it lends quite well to this, this sort of picture. Um, especially when you're using the inks. So I'm using the mid green to make sure that I've got these nice edges on the petals and I don't have to worry too much. The, the flow of the dark green and the aubergine colour will just happen. This is going to give it a really nice sort of atmospheric quality. With the picture being all grass and all green, what I would advise is that you leave a little bit of light towards the top. So I'm not going to go all the way up to the top so that I've got that bit of light there. Just watch out for any dry edges you don't want so I've got a little bit of mist water there I'm just going to add a bit of water and a bit of paint there okay so that's working quite nice I'm going to come in with a bit of the darker green now Now this is really quite thick and I don't want you to worry that you think, ooh, this is over thick because it's going to spread and it's going to give like a feather quality that's going to work nicely for some of the leaves. So I want you to just, to just work with it. Because what you don't want is to have to paint in every single leaf on the next stage. You want some of them to appear naturally. So in a way this is doing that for you. So you can paint a few leaves but what I don't want you to do is to paint all the leaves in. What this should be doing is you should be picking out areas that you want to look a little bit darker and just letting it do its own thing. So rather than thinking leaf shapes, you can have a couple of leaf shapes, but don't go mad. Let the paint do its thing. You can pick out leaves later. If you can bring some of this dark paint around the edge, not all the way around the edge, but into where these these petals are defined then it will help those flowers pop out later remember this is a base you don't want to eliminate all the colour Keep checking that you're happy with the shape of your petals. Once you've done this but you can't really go back and change it. There's little tweaks you can do but you want to get them looking nice now if you can. So mine's still plenty wet enough. Okay, I'm coming in with the aubergine colour now and I just want little bits of this to show darker areas. So if you think about looking at the photograph and where this shadow 
you can just pop a few bits of this in. As a rule, if you think central and at the bottom, that will work better. And we're going to do the same with the with the sepia. That's how it tends to work better. What you've got to be a little bit careful of is not mixing it on the page. You can see I dab and then I leave. If you start to mix, you're just going to end up with muddy browns. It's a real lesson of control today. I just want to try and get this edge a bit nicer. And just think balance all the time you want that color to be balanced okay I'm going to take a little bit of sepia on if you haven't got sepia then just skip this bit out the sepia ink you don't need to put it on in sepia watercolor it's just it just adds an extra, an extra bit of depth so I'm aiming for a few spots Again, it's just to create some dark areas, and I really like the effect of the ink. But it is one of those things, it's a love-hate thing, you either love it or you, or you hate it. Where it's touching into the the puddles of of paint it works much better it flows much better okay and the last little thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to take a little bit of normal table salt And just sprinkle it very lightly on a few of these darker patches so I'm thinking the dark green patches that's going to start to build texture for leaves I'm doing a little bit more of this later you can come over the dark green if you think about where your leaves might be so it is really a sprinkle like you'd put on your dinner you don't want to overload okay and then I'm gonna let that dry naturally okay so I've dried it really well and I've rubbed the salt off you want to get as much of this salt off as you can what we're going to do now is to work at getting some positive leaves on. When I say positive leaves, I mean painting the leaves and some negative shapes of leaves. What you can do to help yourself right now is to draw in any of the stems again that you, you want to, to get the back in. So I've drawn a couple of stems here. I've drawn just the line of a leaf shape here. So if you can think you're going to struggle draw a few leaves now and that's going to then help you to do this technique what you need is your water brush your nice soft water brush and you need your round number 10 make sure you've got nice clean water and you're going to work your way around the picture so starting in one place and working round what i want you to focus on is is looking at where you can see leaf shapes you're happy with so if you can see something and think actually i really like that leaf then you're just going to paint over it with water and leave it okay so i've started to bring in some water right next to this stem because i want to start to pull out the stem of the flower at the same time as pulling out the stem of the flower I'm just going to bring out a leaf shape here I 
I'm painting over this dark leaf that's already there that I'm happy with and I can paint in any other leaves as well so where I want a negative leaf shape to be then I need to leave it dry so if I come in here now and just create a shape across there this is probably the easiest way to explain it and then bring the water up to that shape so I've got a leaf here that I'm happy with I don't really want to touch that one and then with the dark paint I'm going to start to create a lighter leaf that's happening here so I can leave that shape there and then this is the edge of the the leaf the other side when you're doing something like this then keep it simple so you don't need to do a huge amount of leaves just a couple of a couple of the the negative ones a couple of the positive ones will just work so I've got some really nice effects still happening here so I'm just going to carry on with the water and the trick with the water is you're just going to work your way around gently So just to show you how simple it can be, I'm carrying on, I'm just painting this with water. If you paint everywhere with clean water, then you won't get a watermark. When I say everywhere, I don't mean on the, on the flowers. So you can come in now and define any extra bits that you want to be a bit darker you can add a bit more to the leaves you can see you can add further leaves so with this dark I can come in and create another leaf shape between these two points of sepia that's going to create another darker leaf Add another so you, what you can get is you can end up with overlapping leaves so this is another positive leaf coming in here if at any point you think oh I want to add a bit more dark in there then you can use your aubergine color to bring in if you don't want it to be leaf colored to bring in a little bit more dark in places So you want to be nice and careful around this top section, keep that nice and light. In fact, I'm just going to wet this section with the water. Okay, so the, the card ran out at the wrong point as it normally does, so I'm just going to explain what I carried on doing. I think you can probably see anyway. So I've, I've kept it nice and simple, I've carried on round the picture, I've created a few negative leaves so I've kept this all all just wet I've come around each of these stems and I've added a couple of dark leaf shapes in there then I've dried it really well so we're on to the next stage now um, and what I want us to do now is to just pop in a couple of more sharper positive leaf shapes so you're just going to need your round number 10 for this and you can use a mixture of the yellows and the greens it's, it's up to you what what you really want to use and I just want you to pull out a couple of positive leaf shapes so I'm going to use a mid green and what I want is a little bit more more focus to come into here now so I'm just going to reference the photograph um, and just see where I can bring a couple of bits in so if I come in here and remember that these can overlap so you don't feel that you've got to make it so it's on a shape that's already there you can overlap these they can be small they can be big it's up to you you can also leave a little bit more light in them so you, you don't have to go in the whole thing so you can see I've dabbed in
and I can dab in with a little bit of dark you can add a little bit of salt if you want to if you want to still create that nice texture what you've just got to remember is you don't want it to be a smooth leaf you want the feeling of it being a primrose leaf so don't come in and paint smooth dab I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt on because I think it does add extra texture and I'm going to do a few of these now so every one of them can be different it's just having a little think about where you want to go so if I come in now with a little bit of water so I'm making this one a bit different and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of the dark so that I get a dark edge the key really is to have these coming around the flowers if they come around the flowers they're going to help the flowers to to stabilize and to stand out I'm going to dip, it, dip into the, the lighter green as well I can create like a curved shape one which I've got a couple of these on that go a bit deeper I'm going to use that little sort of bit here where we've, I've got the ink already there come in with a bit of the dark just in there as well and a little bit of salt create this cute sprinkling the salt on I think just to add a bit of extra texture So I'm going to come on with again with mid green. I need to do something in this middle section. So I'm going to come and create one here. I can use these the ink as, as darker areas in the leaf. That works quite nicely. So dab dab dab. Add a bit of dark add a bit of salt and then I'm going to come up here I think and create a smaller one something just over the base of this stem here just so that's going to give some that, that uh, something to come from later on a little sprinkle of salt both of those all done to that edge there but I'll just make sure that that's okay and then I'm going to bring one maybe here So you're just going to get a few on and then dry them off, okay? Okay, so you want to dry it really well and rub the salt off. Before we just, it's really essential with I'm now going to change our water. Just before we do this, I'm just going to pop a bit of green in on this stem that's left. So I'm going to use the mid green that we've used in the background. So I've just popped a little bit of water on. I'm using a round number six. And then 
you want a little bit of either the dark green and or the aubergine colour so I'm just going to define that a little bit more bring in a bit of the dark green those edges and then I'm going to dip my brush into the aubergine colour and just at the base just darken that so you get in the shadow we're going to use the aubergine colour as shadow on the petals anyway okay so I'm going to dry that off and then change my water you, you want super clean everything now so make sure your brush is clean make sure your water is clean and then I want you to get some neat gamboge or a, a warm yellow um, so you've got that here and then I want you to make a pale Naples yellow if you haven't got Naples yellow because it's an artist quality colour then I would suggest making a very watered down version of the gamboge so very very light um, or or another warm yellow very very light raw sienna doesn't work so well on the flowers it's not fresh enough so I'd steer clear of the raw sienna and go for a water really watery yellow instead I'd make sure that you've got some of this aubergine left as well if you haven't got any of that you want to make some of that up okay so we've got nice nice clean brushes I've even washed my water brush in case it got any of the green left on and I'm coming in with some water you then want a pale wash of the Naples yellow it doesn't matter if you don't get all the way into the edges because you, you always get bits of light anyway so don't focus too much on getting right to the edge with the water you don't need to just make sure that it's not too strong just while that one's drying a little bit I'm going to come in and just dab into this one as well if you're worried about this next bit then use a round number six so I've rinsed it out I've dabbed it off dry I'm going to dip into the gamboge you do need the tiniest amount of water to make the paint work but you don't want too much water and then what you're going to do is come in and create the star shape that you can see in the center if it goes a bit further don't worry you just want it to be damp so you've got that nice softness I'm going to come and do the other ones the other side exactly the same and then dry them off okay so I've dried those off really well what I've done is just take a tiny bit of uh, just some leftover red that I had on my palette just in whilst it was still damp just just the tiniest little amount and I've just bought it a little bit round that edge there and that's just going to give it a hint more sharpness um, on the final on the final picture okay so this bud here we only need the Naples yellow one so I'm just going to take a little bit of water and just a tiny bit of the Naples yellow keep it towards the center and you've got somewhere to go with the shadow okay so I'm now making sure that both of my brushes are clean the round number 10 is going to be my softening in brush and the round number six is going to be the brush that I'm applying the paint with so I've loaded both brushes up with water and I have dipped in to the aubergine colour now there's not a huge amount of shadow on these flowers but there is you're going to need that definition there you're going to need that center so if I come in and just start to create this center 
so this is just the aubergine colour and then I can pull out a little bit here with a wet brush I'm going to run down one side and then I'm going to touch into the centre so what I want is to give a hard and a soft side the key is to make sure that this isn't too dark and it's working nicely so if I come round a few of these edges I can still see my pencil lines if you can't then really reference what's happening in the photograph if it flows too much then you want to dry your brush off and just come back in and stop it flowing damp brush just get into the right edge so this one I want to touch in here get that nice soft edge you don't always have to, to paint the whole line you can just pull the water along and it does the job you see there now I've got really nice definition and then I need to look into each petal and just check if I need any additional definition in there so what I might need is a few lines coming from the centre bit so that I start to get that shadow I've got a little bit there if you've got a really watery aubergine colour you can add a few little bits to the edges that works quite nicely there's a bit of shadow and you can just soften those in okay so I'm going to work around the flowers in the same way okay so I've carried on doing the flowers in exactly the same technique so you you end up with the definition of each of the petals um, with a bud again you want the aubergine colour and you can just define where those petals fold and then I just can soften in on the outside edge like that so it's really simple once it's dry then you just want to go in back in and sharpen up a little bit the yellow and a little bit the centre that's going to make it zing now you can go down to a smaller brush if you want to and so I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the aubergine and you basically want to create that that centre again that's going to really help it to stand out so this is just going on dry One's got more of a dot in the centre there. You can soften in in places again if you want. I tend to find that this this really holds it together nicely so I prefer it to be a bit sharper on that on that centre section and then don't be afraid to come back in with a little bit more yellow sometimes when you come in with the shadow you find that the yellow doesn't look as sharp and it actually works quite nicely to come over whilst your aubergine is still damp because then it blends in
you don't have to do it on all of them you can just do it on a couple so I'm just taking a little bit more yellow in you don't even have to take it all the way over just it's just giving it a little bit more sharpness just to help it to stand out so this is just going on to dry Don't eliminate all the softness. Make sure you're keeping some of that softness in. Take a little bit into the centre if you want as well. They are quite yellow in the centre. Is this one dry yet? Yeah. I'm just going to take a little bit more. Just along one edge there. Just to give it a bit more of a sharpness on that that bud as well. Just soften that in slightly. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Hope you've enjoyed this week, so I'll see you next week. Bye.